Y'all, what's good with my peoples? So today's video is actually a pretty interesting one. Um, ugh, give me a second to get my magazine. Make sure I show clear and everything. So, if you can see the title, we'll we'll be getting to that. Um, but basically, I got pulled over carrying one of their spooky spookies one of their spooky spookies and if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about we'll just call it just call it what it is it's a ghost glock <laughs> so i got pulled over with one and um it, i actually that's how you know i was living a different life and i was living a dangerous life um i had just came from the range um and i had two um of my ghost glocks uh my spooky spookies uh one of them i had on me and then the other one i just had in the middle of the console area um and, and uh basically i had got it from adp i think that's what it's called adp builders or whatever it was called still had the receipts and everything on me i had just taken it to the range and um I might throw in the footage here, maybe. It's really old if I can find it. But basically, it was a one-shot wonder. And the reason was, um, well, I'll show you. I don't have it anymore physically, but I'll show you what what the problem was. So basically, in layman's terms, when you have a rail, right? The rails have these grooves um the grooves on the slide have to f basically be able to not free float but have to be able to glide on these rails inside because there's a rail right here and then there's a rail right here as you can see see that so basically that's how the slide moves back and forth on that rail um I'll show you, I'll take the parts out and stuff off camera so I can show you guys. And uh, basically, it's like, like that, so you can see how that's free floating like that. I don't wanna put it too far back because it might get stuck, but yeah, you guys get it. So like, you know, like that. So you can see those two parts mesh together like that. And they have to be able to uh, <clears throat> free float like that, right? They have to be able to glide on top of one another like so. And so the problem I was having, and I didn't know anything at the time, and there wasn't like a whole bunch of information about this really, was basically that my rails were uneven. And I think this was before they corrected it and everything. I had too much material at the bottom right here. And then in the back, um, I think it was either too high or the hole was just out of line because I did it with, honestly, I did it with a drill and I was rushing. So, you know, I used the jig and everything, um, but the, the jig was getting damaged because I was drilling it so hard. I actually ended up drilling through the rails um, just to line it up and stuff. And it still wasn't lining up. Kept getting stuck out of battery slightly. Like it'd get stuck like right there. Then I'd have to hammer it back and hammer it back. So I'm like, maybe it just got to break in, which was not the case. Uh, learning, looking back, I was like, man, I really messed that thing up. Um, so it didn't work. It was a one shot wonder to begin with. So it was like, uh, was it even worth it to even go through all this trouble for it? I don't think so. But you know, you could argue one way or the other. But basically I was carrying it anyway because I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And my other one that I had on hand was a Taurus PT 111 9mm. Um, and that thing was actually pretty tough. It actually got rained on and rusted shut and it actually just still worked and safety still came on and off and it shot pretty good. I never did an accuracy test on it or nothing like that because I wasn't worried about that. That was just a really a, a, a get off me pocket rocket at the time. So anyways the lessons i learned while uh i was carrying around this uh p adp uh gg ghost glock basically 
the officer told me um, I had to go through all this process and stuff because we were not a constitutional concealed carry state. I had my concealed carry license, but I did not know that <clears throat> if you have multiple guns, you can't conceal carry them all. So, you know, I did not know that at all. So basically, I learned that in the car is not really a uh, open carry place because I thought I could open carry one of them and then concealed carry the other um the car is really not an open carry it's, it's been up for argument in the supreme court and stuff like he was like yeah don't argue with me argue with the supreme court i was like wow never had an officer tell me nothing no no shit like that i was like wow that really baffled me but not only that he said this is gonna be tough because <clears throat> you don't have a serial number on it i was like well i don't have to i know the state laws I don't have to and this is what i was being a smart ass to police which is guys if you don't learn nothing else from this video being a smart ass to the police is a big freaking no-no just be real cooperative be cool um if you broke the law admit your mistake most of the time they'll let you off with a warning if they can but if not you know just be cooperative nine times out of ten if you're real cooperative and it's not really that big of a deal they'll dismiss the case anyways so I ended up, I ended up getting uh, arrested, um, and they took my guns for about two weeks. I had to, uh, um, once the case got dismissed and stuff, because it really wasn't a case. It was just like unauthorized carrying a vehicle or something because I didn't have it serialized and blah blah. blah. I proved that they was mine. Showed up with the receipts um showing that it was mine and they you know took the ballistics in case it was using a crime and yada 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 and uh yeah basically because it didn't have no serial number he said this is gonna be it's gonna be a tough one and he was like listen if you don't learn nothing else from this stop just don't carry nothing without a serial number because it looks bad i was like okay i don't really know what the implications on that uh, really are, but I'll take that into consideration. So, that being said, I don't have any more that don't have serial numbers on them. All of mine, except for one, have serial numbers on them that I actually consider carrying. Uh, even this one has a serial number on it. Um, even my, my Big Daddy Kane this thing even got a serial number on it you can get them engraved um and now the how the laws are you kind of have to get them with a serial number on them i don't know how that's working um but some like this this bad boy i probably wouldn't conceal carry this anyway because it's so big that's what she said but they don't have a serial number on it and i don't plan on putting on putting one on it uh to be honest but you know there's just differentiate range toys from actual concealed carry uh, parts and pieces. Concealed carry pieces. Because if you're concealed carrying and you have to use it, the fact that it's unserialized will be used in the court of law against you. Anything you say and or do can be used against you in the court of law. So just take that into consideration. <clears throat> and I'm not saying you can't carry one, but just know your laws uh people know your laws folks so anyways that was the time i got arrested for p80 you know and um every like i said everything got dismissed so it's not really a big deal for me um but it was definitely a learning experience because you know you think you know everything until the time and the place comes and then you're like damn i didn't know that i didn't know that i didn't know that but anyways guys just take that into consideration like i'm subscribed um if you guys learn anything from this video, leave it in the comments below. And yeah, peace.